All right, everybody. Um, I want to start this video off by saying glory to Jesus, glory to God, glory to goodness. Because without goodness, we have nothing. Nothing. Without mercy, nothing. Without compassion, nothing. Without love, nothing. Without that, it's black, it's bleak, it's dark. There's nothing there. It's the absence of light. And the absence of light is scary to a living person like this. What I want to ask you, and I don't mean to get, I don't mean to get emotional, but you got to understand, like I said before, this is, this is the fourth day cycle of me getting off of dope. And I got to keep, I got to keep exposing myself. I don't think this is for an accident. I just don't think that this is for an accident anymore. I was watching a video where I forget who said it. I don't know if it was Jordan Peterson or somebody, but they said that public humiliation Mel Gibson said this. Mel Gibson said that public humiliation is the number one fear in our world. And I believe that too. We're, we're so scared to be judged and mocked and made fun of and said, ah, look at him. But I'm not like that. He's going through that, not me. They're doing that. That family's having that happen, not mine. See, it's, it's, it's pure denial on all of our parts, especially me. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And what I want to talk about, I want to ask y'all. Listen, I am weak. But it says... For when you are weak, you are strong, right? That's that's what it says. But how, how many of us understand that when it says, for when you are weak, you are strong? And, and I'm admitting I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm a babe in all this stuff. I'm a babe. I don't know how to, to get off of these drugs. How do you how do you do that in a world where you're bombarded? And you can make one phone call. And this is, is so used to getting a hit. And it's, it's so used to taking something. Listen, if you want me to be... Listen, here's what I'm going to do on this video. I'm even going to show you this shit to show you how real this is. Because I don't want to keep a secret. Give me one second to grab these two things here. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something. And what, what I want to ask, what I want to ask everybody on here is because I can't make decisions for you, any of you out there, any of you brothers and sisters in the soul out there or whoever's listening or, or paying any of my videos any mind or any of these videos, not my videos, because it's not of me anymore. I don't give myself the credit. Even when I say me, I'm not giving myself the credit. But let me show you something here. Do you believe... Do you believe in strongholds? Do you believe in spiritual warfare strongholds in your life? Whether literally, metaphorically, or it's just something in your mind that you know is there. You know that there's something going on in this world. We all know it. We all know it. We all know there's something going on that is, it's off. It, it's just off. That's the days that we have come into over time. We, we've developed this mindset. We did this. We, the people, did this. All of us, me, you, them, those people, all of us. Nobody's excluded from this. Nobody. I can't, we can't exclude ourselves. 
I can't exclude myself from any of this. But, but I need to talk about me because I am the only one that can be honest with myself today. I can't be honest for another person. I can't do that. It's impossible for me to do that. Now, I want to show you something. In my hand here, this prescription, now I'm not going to say whose this is. It's not mine. But it's, it's someone that I personally know. This is Subutex. This is Subutex here. I'll show you the pills just so you don't think I'm kidding here. This is Subutex right here. Subutex, these white pills, eight milligram pills. I was taking Suboxone for since like 2003, 2004. I've been taking this stuff and putting it in my brain. And has it been a hell of a journey? It's been, it's been 20, it's been like 20 years, 20 some years I've been doing this stuff, over two decades, and I'm a 38 year old male that's been doing this, and this, methadone, this is liquid methadone that you can get in the Pennsylvania area, you can get this, I, I don't know where else, they, they got blue methadone, they used to have green, like uh, like uh, Slimer and Ghostbusters green methadone, because I remember my older brother Earl taking it, when he would be strung out going through this bullshit that I'm still going through. My brother that overdosed and died, and I seen him dead on the floor purple. So, this is nothing new, this is nothing new with my family, this is nothing new, I've been being punched with this. This spiritual warfare has been punching me like Mike Tyson for years and years and years and years. I, I, I know what I know what spiritual uh, abuse is uh, even upon myself because I've been abusing myself and and this has been abusing. And once this starts abusing, it almost can't stop. So what you say to yourself is. What can stop that thing? And I, and I believe right now the only thing that can stop this is if you call out to something other than yourself. And I'm not going to tell, I'm not even going to tell any of y'all anymore. Who, who, who or what or what to call out to. I'm not even going to tell any of you anymore because I know how people are with this stuff. They don't want to be told anything. They, they just, they want to stay away. They want to stay. They want to stay hidden. They want to stay away from it all. They just want to say, I don't want nothing to do with it. Keep it away from me. And I'm going to stay over here. And listen, I don't have a problem with that, but sometimes I'm sorry, but that just does not work. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. In order for me to change my, my mind and my heart with something, and listen, I'm not being a hypocrite in this video. I know what it is to be a hypocrite too. I have been a hypocrite so many times in my life. Straight hypocrite. Whitewashed tomb, sepulcher, stinking, rotten, filled with all bunch of garbage. I know what that is. I am guilty. Guilty is charged. And I don't say that before man because I don't need to prove anything to men and women anymore. I don't need to prove anything to people. I stand before whatever is governing all of this. Now, I say whatever and I shouldn't do that. See, I need to start proclaiming. If I don't start proclaiming this and I keep, and I keep holding back on it, See, that's, that, that's how easy it is just not to say things, you know, like to say God or, or, or the example of compassion and mercy and love and, and sacrifice and saying, I would give of myself to help this person. And that's what the example of Jesus Christ does. It, it just does that. I can't help that. I did not die for you. I did not shed my blood for you. I can never love you that much. If you want me to be honest, if you want me to be absolutely honest, do you know how I feel sometimes with humans? 
there is a part of me that loves them and, and has compassion and mercy. And I look at them and I feel bad. And I say, my God, don't let them fall. Don't let anything happen to them. Please, God, please. And I pray, I do pray for people. But then there's a side of me, my human nature, that I, I get kind of disgusted in my own skin. I feel nasty and filthy. Like even now, I feel like a like a a, a reptile, like a like a salamander, like some nasty, sticky thing that didn't shower for days. And I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been showering. I have not been showering for a while because touching that water when you're feeling these effects, like right now I'm getting chills in my body, I'm still going through withdrawal. It's going to last for a while. And me doing this, I'm just prostrating. I'm literally prostrating myself to understand what it is that I am going through. And I'm asking myself, Nate, why do you keep doing this to yourself? Why do you keep doing this to yourself? Why do you keep doing this to yourself? It, it, it says if God loves me, that then what else matters? See, see, this thing with the approval of men and women, we all look for this approval. And listen, if I'm being honest with you, I even look for this kind of validation and approval from the world to know something good for themselves. You see what I mean? To know something that is that that can help them to to get along in life, to find a craft, to do something. I'm always wishing that upon others in my head and my mind. I'm always like, God, let this person see this. God, let this person do this thing for you. God, let this person take care of this these animals. God, let this person know what it is to feel the glory of music. God, let this person know what I have known before in my life. But without thinking that I'm bragging about it, it's just I want others to experience something like that too. But I also know the other side of the coin. I also know the side of suffering and pain and misery and agony and defeat and misery and shame and guilt and all these other things. And it's like a fire in me going through my blood and my body right now. It's like I'm, I'm hot and then I'm cold. It's like a fire going through my body and I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this right now. I do not want to do this. My flesh, this flesh that is perspirating, this flesh that is perspirating and is sweating and is feeling horrible, I want to do a shot. I want to take something for it. I want to block it out. I want to get high. High, so high. I can make it up. I want to get high. And then you hear this stuff and, and then them emotions and stuff start going. And then you're like, oh man, I remember that. I remember that song. Let's get high. And you know, I'm just, I'm just being sarcastic right now. I'm, I'm trying to lighten up a little bit, but listen, I don't mean, I really don't mean to be so serious in my videos. But there is a time to be serious for myself. Like, I am not this uptight, serious guy. That's not me. That's not my character. I've never been like that. I've never, ever, ever been like that, man. I've always been loose. I've always been easy on the eyes with people. I've always treated people like I wanted them to treat me, even though I did some bad shit in my life. And I am, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I will tell you that I am a sinner that needs saved from my own bullshit. <laughs> I am that. And people say, oh, there's no such thing as sin. There is no such thing as right or wrong. There is nothing going on in America right now. Listen, America is Babylon right now, brothers and sisters. Don't get it twisted. America is Babylon. America has fallen and it's falling. 
help me, I can't get up. But see, we're not doing that now. We're not, we're not crying out. We're not crying out. Because the pride and the ego and the, the hiddenness and the shame and the fear of public humiliation, thank you, Brother Mel Gibson. Thank you, other people that know that what I'm saying is the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. The gavel is hitting the truth, the truth, the truth. There's got to be authority here. There's got to be somebody to start proclaiming something. This is what it's going to take for certain things. And listen, I have to be very clear with this. I have to be very clear with this. For all of my goodness and great things, I have been brought troubles and pain, people. Don't think that I have not gone through hell. Do not ever think that I have not gone through hell and I'm just better off. You seem fine to me. Uh, you have it good and, you know, you got this and that. Yes, I do. And I'm very grateful for that. And I, I, I don't deserve a lot of what I have. And I'm very fortunate to be where I'm at right now. And I'm very fortunate to have food and all that stuff. But I'm still, I am not living my calling right now. But maybe I am. Maybe I am, maybe I ain't, but I'm not here to say that. I'm not here to brag and say, you know, I'm living my calling and this is my calling and I'm doing this and that. No, I'm not here to do that because that's when pride and ego and all this stuff sets in and I know how clever that can be too. But I also want to say I am just a man. I have a sex drive, even though lately I have another thing to say. Lately, I haven't pleasured myself in about two months and I never ever went that long. So if you want to call it semen retention or you want to call it whatever, I, I can't, if I'm being honest with you, if you have kids around or you don't uh, want to hear this, then you can cut the video off. I'll give you a second. But I have not ejaculated. I have not spewed my seed in almost two months and that's the longest that I have ever went since I was like ever since far back as I can remember as a kid the first time I ever did something like that and I knew it then I knew it then even when I did it I said wow that was that was amazing but then at the same time something was like Nate I felt like dirty about myself when I was done with it for some reason, but don't get it wrong. I still, I still love the, the, the feminine body. I still, I still, uh, resonate with my own body as a man, but I, the, I love femininity. I, I love women. I love the ladies, if I'm being honest. And I have to be careful with that too, because anything can happen with that. I can sleep with a girl that can have a disease and I could get HIV or AIDS or another disease, life-threatening disease. I, I mean, anything can happen. Listen, all it takes, all it takes in this world is one. One small little microscopic choice. And that one little choice, that one little mustard seed, when it says if you have a mustard seed of faith, it can grow into a mountain of something, it's the same with anything else. If you have a mustard seed of drugs, uh, some kind of like uh, you're sleeping around with every girl in the town, which... I won't lie, I wanted to do it one time and sometimes I, I even look at ladies in music videos and, and, uh, and I'm watching these music videos from like the late 90s, early thousands and I'm seeing all these beautiful women and I'm thinking, man, I want them all to be mine. You know, I want them all to be mine. And it's like, that that is, yeah, it's, it's, it is lust, it's desire, but at the same time, it's like, there's got to be some kind of thing saying you just can't do all of that. 
because you're pushing boundaries with stuff. And look, I don't want to go long. I don't want to go long in this video. Because I had a little window here. My, my brother and my mom went to the store to get something. So I figured I would just do this because I, I might go for a walk. But like I said, I am not feeling good. I'm not feeling good physically. And this sucks. It sucks really bad. And I'm trying to tell everybody I am still a human. I'm still a human being. I'm not saying, I'm not even saying that I won't ever get back on these things. I'm not even saying that because that's how strong these strongholds are. That's how strong it is. And if I would have never tried these things, if I would have never been tempted by them, if I would have never had people in my family that did it or anything like that, then maybe I would have never been a drug addict, but it didn't happen like that. And a, a, a most of my family is and was drug addicts. That's just how it is. I am in I am in a drug addict family and a in a dysfunctional family. If we're being honest, even if people want to deny that and be in denial, I'm not in denial of it. I'm very I'm a very dysfunctional person myself. But I don't want to be dysfunctional. I don't want to spread my dysfunctionality to other people to thwart their lives or to make them miserable or to bring them down. That's not what I want to do. My misery does not like the company of other misery. I want to be around people that want to help, that want to do something, that want to that want to grow something, that want to build something, that want to plant something, that wants to make something of this life while we're here because why else would we be here? to just be in a deep, dark hole doing nothing. And, and this is what I want to say, man. Every single one of whoever's watching this, we've got to start protecting our energy. And, but, but don't be, don't be so uptight and paranoid and like restricted with it. Share it, but, but we got to start protecting our energy because if you're around something that is keeping you sick, that is keeping you down, that is keeping you influenced in a bad way and it's draining your energy, that is not where you belong. That's going to keep happening over and over and over. And listen, I even know how some people, they are addicted to that drama. They're addicted to that soap opera. They're, addi they're addicted to that trouble that comes and it gives them something to do and something. And that, that's just that, that's, that's no way to live for me. I, I don't, I, I really don't want that in my life. I just really don't. I really don't, but I know things are going to come. I know things are going to come. There is, I'm going to end this video with this. There is someone that I know that I was doing drugs with just a couple days ago. And I was contributing to this shit. And my brother, I heard my brother talking out here just a minute ago, just a little bit ago. We had to put up a piece of the siding that fell. I had to nail it into the wall out here outside the house that I'm in. There is a girl that I know that was my brother's girlfriend that he had kids with. He had two kids with. Her name is Rachel. I'm not going to say her last name, but I'm telling everyone out there, pray for Rachel. That she recovers because she had a brain aneurysm in her head because of these drugs and shit, this sport, this spiritual warfare going on. And that could have been me. That could have been my brother. That could have been any one of us that could be in the hospital right now. And, and I don't know if she's in a coma or something, but last night I was up all night and I had a really good feeling. I was really joyful. I was listening to music. I was, I was up. I was energetic. I was like, things are gonna, things are gonna, uh, things are gonna get better. There, there's gonna, the good times are coming. And then I reminded myself. I said, Nate, remember when the good comes, there's always going to be bad following it.
there's always going to be something that's coming. There's always going to be another death in the family. There's always going to be another stronghold on the way. There's always going to be someone coming in your life trying to influence you with some stuff that they're going through. And we need to pray for them. We need to start praying for them, y'all. We need to get... Listen, I don't like using the word spiritual or spirituality, but we need to start praying. And whether you want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of God or Allah or or just pray, just pray. I don't know. And some people think that it's for nothing. Some people think prayer is absolutely for nothing. I Listen, I really don't think it is. I really don't think it is because I, I even prayed... I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't say this. I, I don't know if I'm going to say this because I'm supposed to keep this a secret. I'm supposed to lock the room and go in the closet and pray to God this stuff myself. I'm not supposed to say this, but I want to give you an example. I actually prayed for her, I think the day before, and I thought of her and I was praying for her. And I said, God, please help her get off of that stuff and please make her better. But I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want that to happen. I do not want that to happen to anybody like that. Or if something does happen to me or anybody else, God forbid that it goes really quick, that it's that it's a merciful, quick thing, you know? Because even me, I've been having headaches for the last, I had a headache for almost three days in a row. When I was doing them videos, I had a headache. When I came back, I had a headache. When I went to sleep, I had a headache. I took some Excedrin. And I don't like taking over-the-counter stuff because I'm very allergenic to this stuff. I'm allergic. Allergic to a lot of this stuff. I can't take it. Cold medicines, ibuprofen, aspirin, naproxone. I can't. It all makes me feel... It, it it just it, it it like it makes my it makes my uh my 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 muscles jump in my face and it it just it, it it makes my face feel weird and it does something to my body. I'm not I'm not good with most drugs, but see the drug that is a very powerful drug and it just blocks everything out. But when you're getting off of it, it's absolute hell. Is both heroin, benzodiazepines. Cocaine and stuff is bad, but it's not like it's not like heroin and stuff. It's nowhere near. It's it's a monster too. You know, don't get me wrong. It's it's a leviathan in and of itself, but it's not like heroin. It's not like dope. It's not like opiates or opioids. It's nothing like that. Like this stuff goes on and 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 on. And you you go to sleep, you wake up, it's there. You go to sleep, you wake up, it's there, even if you do sleep, and it's still there. So it's like, I'm telling you people, listen, if you are someone that is a drug addict or you're someone that hasn't done drugs yet, listen, this stuff right here, stronghold. All this stuff's a stronghold. Please take my word. So I usually don't do videos around others or whatever, but whatever. But anyway, I'll end it on that note. I don't really want to go any further. But yeah, it's, I'm telling you, strongholds are real. They're real. And I'm going through it. So don't just don't do it to yourself. That's all I could say. I don't know. If you do it to yourself, there's going to be consequences. So listen. Um, give it out. Give it out. Don't keep it to yourself. Give it to something other than you if you have to do that, please. So glory to God, glory to the example of what Jesus did and be safe and be cool. I'm done. I don't, 
I didn't really want to keep going this long anyway, but. It is what it is, and it's happening, and it's going on, so. This is the chapter, this is the chapter that I find myself in. And I'm dealing with it because there's consequences to things that I do that I did in my life. <clears throat> so take care. Be well as you can. And praise God.